Tonight, how dangerous inmates planned our huge prison riot for months, but authorities claim they had no idea. Mourning a tragic loss as a trio of teenage best mates die after their car slammed into a tree. Could Australia be next in line to legalise gay marriage with a date for a conscience vote now set? And Victoria's first female governor sworn in and she's promised big things in her trailblazing role. This is 10 Eyewitness News, first at five, with Stephen Quartermain and Candace Wyatt. Good evening. Also tonight, a female rider dies after a track work tragedy at Caulfield. But first, the blame game has begun. Serious questions are being asked as to how authorities were caught off guard by the massive riot at the Metropolitan Remand Centre. The chaos involving up to 300 inmates lasted 15 hours before heavily armed police managed to finally gain the upper hand. Joe Hill joins us. Joe, tensions have been high all day. Was there any more trouble? Well, Stephen, at one point there were great concerns that those tensions had boiled over. Once again, we saw a number of fire trucks descend on the prison here and it was confirmed that a small fire had broken out once again inside the prison, but it was contained and the department says that there were no further major incidents at any of the prisons across the state today. Now, the Corrections Commissioner has conducted a tour of the prison here. It says that the damage done during that 15-hour riot has been extensive. Now, the prison here and all of the prisons across the state have been in lockdown today. All of the prisoners have been contained to their cells in the wake of that 15 hours of chaos. And she's a Bombers fan and now here's Brad looking ahead to tonight's sport. Brad, an injury blow for the Magpies. Yeah, there is, Stephen. One of their premiership defenders won't line up against the Hawks. Details shortly. The Kangas promise they won't sledge the Suns. Andrew Bogart offers some advice to Matthew Delavado. And Aussie James Duckworth is into the second round at Wimbledon. For the first time, waiting for him is his good mate, who's also his flatmate. Thanks, Brad. Coming up after the break. A motorcyclist killed in a smash after trying to evade police. A new hope for breast and lung cancer patients as the federal government subsidises life-saving drugs. This is 10 Eyewitness News. A motorbike rider has died after attempting to elude police at Oakley. It's believed the officers put on their lights and siren to intercept the rider, prompting him to flee. The 39-year-old man then sped through a red light and was struck by a car. It's an unusual event for police to see a fatal crash. We get called to fatal collisions all the time, but we don't usually see them occur. The driver of the car, aged in his 50s, was taken to hospital with serious injuries. The investigation is continuing. Time for a check of the traffic. Here's Andrew Crook and the chopper, and he's over an incident in Mount Eliza. Thanks, Stephen. In the floorboards online traffic chopper, we've just arrived here over Mount Eliza where the cleanup is underway after a car fire right near Mount Eliza Way. This is on the Frankston side of Mount Eliza. Now, all city-bound traffic's been blocked off. Outbound traffic heading out of Frankston down to just one lane. And for traffic around the Peninsula School, also got some diversions set up, so some big delays expected through the night. I'll be back with more after sport. Today marks a new financial year and the Abbott government is celebrating the moment by trying to recoup some cash from welfare cheats. It's launching a crackdown on people who lie about their incomes in order to claim benefits. Adam Todd reports. Now here's Brad with Wednesday Sport. Thank you, Stephen. A premiership pie ruled out a Friday night's clash with the Hawks. The Kangas say they won't sledge the Suns. Great mates, prepare to face off at Wimbledon. We'll catch up with our cricketers, the Hockey Roos and Andrew Bogart. Blood spilled at the Women's Soccer World Cup. And high above Turkey, some very lucky spectators witness a spectacular world record. Good evening. A blow to Collingwood's bid to topple Premiership favourite Hawthorne at the MCG on Friday night. As Rob Waters reports, one Premiership defender has been ruled out, while another isn't they quite ready lunch to down. return. Apparently they experience <laughs> seven Gs. That is the force up there. You ever been hot air ballooning, Brad? <laughs> no. You should try some time. Exciting things I'm not happen. big on heights, Steve. OK, Brad, thank you. Let's thank update you. the peak hour traffic with Andrew.
<laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Watching tow trucks load up from the floorboards online. Traffic chopper here on Punt Road southbound down to one lane as you come over the Yarra with traffic uh, at a crawl on the approach, pushing back to the east and freeway, heavy in both directions anyway. And through Mount Eliza, big delays after a multi-car smash earlier that we saw on the Nepean Highway. Sees all city-bound traffic blocked off and diverted through the village, through onto Mount Eliza Way with diversions that'll get you onto Old Mornington Road and eventually back onto the Nepean Highway closer to Frankston. Have a safe night. Thanks, Andrew. Emma joins us after the break with all the weather details. And meet the puppies on patrol protecting bandicoots at Werribee Zoo. Now keeping an eye on the possums, here's Emma with the weather. Thanks, Stephen. Good evening. For the start of July, typically our coldest month of the year. And what the forecast has in store is looking fairly typical. For the month of June, temperatures were very close to average across the whole state. But for Melbourne, rainfall was well down, just 28 millimetres last month. The average is almost double that. As for today, we had an overnight low of 10 degrees and it warmed up to exactly 15 degrees. That was shortly after lunch. Outside at the moment, in the city. It's 13 degrees and the wind is northerly. Looking across the suburbs, it was a mild morning, a dry start to the day. It did reach 16 degrees at Avalon, 15 in Laverton and Essendon. Around the state, areas of fog across Victoria cleared to a partly cloudy day with isolated showers in the far southwest. Several towns made it to a top of 15, including Horsham, Hopeton, Port Ferry and Geelong. Across the country, it was a windy day for Hobart and 14 degrees, partly cloudy in Canberra and a cool 10 degrees. Adelaide was also partly cloudy in 15, a top of 23 in Brisbane. Taking a look at the weather charts, the next cold front moves into night. It will move rapidly across our state, so lots of cold air tomorrow, but a high will follow the front and move into Victoria on Friday, bringing more stable conditions. The rainfall chart shows light to moderate showers along the coastlines and light rain moving into Victoria. The capital cities tomorrow, pleasant in Brisbane after early fog, 21, partly cloudy for Sydney, 6 to 17 degrees, and a low of minus 3 for Canberra and a top of just 9. For Victoria, as the cold front moves across, it will bring snow to our ski resorts. Much of the state expecting showers, hailstones forecast for the north central district and parts of Gippsland. Tomorrow, there's a gale warning for the entire coastline and a strong wind wind warning for Port Phillip and Western Port. Around the suburbs, rain is expected in the morning and local hail is possible. It's looking cold, wet and miserable. Out on the bays, winds will start west to northwesterly, waves up to one and a half metres. For Melbourne, we'll start out with a low of nine and we should reach 13, eight degrees in the evening. A partly cloudy day, morning showers should clear by early afternoon. And looking further ahead to Friday, things looking more stable partly cloudy and 13 degrees and for your weekend Saturday 13 just the slight chance of a shower Sunday 13 again but have a look at this lovely and sunny then 13 degrees the top for the start of next week so Stephen that is the forecast rain forecast for tomorrow but not a lot then we can look forward to more stable conditions on Friday and possibly lovely and sunny on the weekend. Thank you, Emma, and that is 10 Eyewitness News for this Wednesday. Stay with us. Family Feuds up next. On behalf of the news team, take care. Good night.